Hi, Dan here. Hope you're doing well. I got a really interesting question from Keith, which I'll read. Hi, Dan. I wonder if you could do a lesson on note selection ideas when improvising, making up bass lines. Your runs, licks, riffs are always melodic and flowing, whereas I think mine sounds stilted and formulaic. OK, so thanks very much, Keith. That's really, really great, great question there. And I'm just going to do a video just with my with my thoughts on this. So when I do YouTube videos, I, um, I sometimes plan things for this one, literally apart from reading that beginning bit. I don't have anything planned and that's the point because if you're making up bass lines you need um, a bunch of ideas that you can call on immediately. So I'm just going to do some random things here and, and, and there's um, there's quite a few things that I think about but when you're playing music a lot of the same ideas crop up. Let's start with that, that's just a C major scale and I'm going to base a few of the lines I'm going to start with around that. So let's just say I'm going to make something up. Great. I've changed my mind there. So um, I just decided as I was playing, literally in the moment, I started something. So I'll just show you that and I'll, I'll show you the thought process that was going behind and the things that I needed to be able to play what I just played. So I just started on a C, third fret, A string. And then I did this. So a little, uh, what was it, sort of hammer on slidey thing. From a G to an A, third fret to fifth fret on the A string. And then back. Now as I played that, I was thinking in my head, hang on a second, I'm hearing something different here. I'm hearing a kind of soul vibe, and that's not the C major scale that I was initially going to teach you. So I sort of morph into a different scale. And this is the thing. So note selection, how, how do you know what notes to play within a given line? So as I was... As my mind was veering towards the soul thing, um, a lot of this is based on listening and working out. I've had 30 years nearly of bass playing and a style of music I absolutely love is soul. And when you listen to enough of those bass lines, you realize you've got a C mixolydian scale. Now you absolutely should know a major scale off by heart. I've got plenty of videos on that, so I'm not gonna go into it too much. It's just C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And a mixolydian is exactly the same, with the exception of the B is go down a semitone, it's a B flat. So note selection, I'm choosing notes from around that. That's a root, that's a fifth, that's a major sixth. Loads of soul lines, this isn't going to be a soul video, I'll, I'll go into different styles later, but loads of soul lines do that. Knock, knock on wood there. So in that style, those notes make a lot of sense. They show up a lot. One fret higher than that sixth is a flat seven. That's that B flat that makes this a mixolydian. I did a video on nine soul R&B patterns, okay? And briefly, here's a few of them. And, and this, this speaks to that note selection idea that Keith was talking about. So I went, this reminds me of a clinic, a Chuck Rainey clinic I went to years ago in London. And someone was talking to him about this very thing. And he just said, he just said something like soul R&B bass playing. He's one of the godfathers of that style. He said, there's like five, six patterns that you need to know. And that's it. And I was like, really? And, uh, but he's right, you know, having listened to so much of it since that time. If you walk up from a major third to a fifth after a root, that happens a lot. So I'm going root, major third, chromatically up to a fifth. That's frets two to five on the D string. And that's the same down the octave. That's a major pentatonic scale. 
I'm playing the C, the D and the E all in the same string. So I can do slidey stuff, which I like. So it's frets three, five, seven on the A, and then five, seven on the D, and then seven on the G. And I know there's that fifth and sixth again, you know, the, the, the intervals of a fifth and sixth. And there's that dominant seven, that flat seven. That happens a lot. A, a movement from a minor third to a major third. So in this case, I'm going third fret A string, that's your C. Just going from the first fret to the second on the D string. That's that major to minor third. Okay, so look, that's your note selection. Of course, I'm using slides. I'm organizing these into, into rhythms. So that's another way of getting this sounding fluid. And, you know, for me, all of, I'm not making this up from, from, from nowhere, from nothing. I've listened and I figured out bass lines and I've reverse engineered it. You know, that's how I like doing it. Um, you know, now you just listen to a bass line, I can go, oh, that's using that scale. And that's the way I think, you know, it, it helps me to think that way, to relate a hundred different bass lines to, to a few concepts. It, it works for me and that's sort of the way I like to teach. Um, let's move on. I'm going to move on to a different style now. So I'm playing in a funk kind of style. So I'm keeping the notes going back that fast. Okay, I'm, I didn't realize that. So I was kind of uh, swinging it a bit. So, to, so instead of like did 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 did, I'm going dig 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 dig. So again, that is a feel. That's a different feel to a straight eight thing. So being aware of different feels is important. I've got a video on that. I'll put links to these. I'm playing the notes really short because that works for that style. So that's having complete control over the instrument. It's another technique, you know, um, playing quite precisely, sort of like Bernard Edwards, which on a 78 Stingray, you've got to play a bit like him. So I'm really controlling the length of the notes with my plucking, but also sort of muting with my fretting hand. Note selection. One of his most famous bass lines in a different key. I'll do it in this key though. It is literally just walking up a Dorian scale. Another great way to listen to that is to listen to Blood Sugar Sex Magic and the Dorian mode is all over that album. Flea plays it all the time there. So I'll just show you this. I'll show you the way I'm playing it now. I'm going fret 5-7 on the A string with fingers 2 and 4. And then I'm going fret 3-5-7 with fingers 1-2-4 on the A string. I'm going frets 4-5-7 with fingers 1-2 and four on the D string. That's A Dorian, it's a minor mode. So A minor pentatonic, the minor pentatonic works over a minor mode. So in terms of note selection, that's all I'm doing. I, I really, really am aware of the interval structure of this. There's a root note. There's that major sick. It's got this really bright, cool sound, especially against the, the, the flat third. Notice that I played it sort of down there, the, the sixth and the flat third, and here. You need to know them in different positions. So that's another element is fretboard knowledge, okay? And, you know, to play it so fluidly is to be able to know the same notes in different places on a bass. You know, that major sixth, flat seven, octave. Uh, what's that? Anthony Jackson's line for the love of money. You hear these Dorian sounds and a lot of funk playing. So in that example, that was where my note selection is coming from. Let me go back to the beginning of the video where I was going to go to C major and then I went way off piste. So I'm going to go to C major. By 
the way. I'm just adding a backbeat in there. Try not to do that in your playing because in, in a band or recording situation, that's really annoying. But just to highlight where the beats are here. Now, here's a really, really handy tip for you. Loads of songs just use root notes on the bass. So learn your C major scale and in all other keys. Like this. So I'm just going fret three, five, seven on the A and on the D strings. If you number them one to six. Chord progressions happen like this. So for example, let's do a, a one, three, six, four. So I'm playing the first note, jumping to the third, then the sixth, then the fourth. by using the notes from the scale. So so note selection, I'm just using stuff from the major scale and I'm just mostly going to the roots there. And I know where they are, I can see where the roots are. Now here's the bit where we're gonna add layers of complexity above this. I might lose you here, but I'm just gonna go for it anyway. So every single one of these notes for example, the first note has a scale under it, a triad, it's just simply the first, third and fifth of the, of the scale, it's a major triad in that case, an arpeggio, lots of different kinds, the simplest is just sticking the octave on the triad, there's the seventh triad where you do one, three, five, seven. There's nothing like this by Omar. Okay, right, so I've just done that on the first note of the C major scale. Every other note that we played as a root before has its own scale underneath, we call it a mode, its own triad and its own chord. Now that really is how I and many bass players are able to just make low, hundreds, hundreds of bass lines up just on the spot is knowing that. Let's, let's go, uh, a bit one level above just playing roots. I'm going to play the same thing as I did. I'm going to do the one, three, six, four. And this time I'm going to play not even full triad. I'm just going to play the third of whatever I'm doing. See how it just adds just a little bit more. Now the information there, if it's a major third, it's a major chord. And if it's a minor, it's a minor. And here's the thing, this is what you must know, how to harmonize a scale. So the C is major, the two, and I'm using Roman numerals here, that's what musicians do. The two is minor, the three is minor, the four and the five are major, and the six is, is minor. It's not gonna take you, I'm ignoring the seven by the way, it's not used an awful lot in the style of music I'm playing at the moment, but you should be aware of it, it's a, it's a diminished triad. But I'm just using these, so many songs do this. So, it's not gonna take you too long to do that. So we've got major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. Okay, let's do a similar thing to what I just did, add some fifths in. I'm gonna do the same thing, but with a little flashy thing at the end, which I'll explain. I, I changed the order, I'll go again. At the end I just did a fill, we're in the key of C major, my note selection, C major pentatonic, it works all the time. As soon as I learnt what these things meant, I, I broke down the fear of them and my ear got much better, my improvisational skills got a lot better, it changed my life. Without a doubt, it really, really did. It's not just theory. You've got to have the um, the technique to be able to, to play this, the timing. There are other elements, but, um, you know, I've noticed so many times theory really freaking people out and, and make, making them think that it's going to take away the magic when they're playing. Absolute nonsense. Um, I like to talk about it a lot, but also with the technique, with the feel, with the groove, you've got to have all those things. Let's think of a, a, another style. Let's go 
Let's go rock. So many different things you can do with rock. As I'm literally making this up on the spot. As I was just playing that, I decided to use a mode. Okay, that's a Phrygian mode. It's just E to E, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Using eighth notes, rock does that a lot. Digging in a bit more, slapping the string against the, against the fretboard a bit more. So when you go to E to F, you get that minor second. Sounds quite evil. And that's just the scale. I, I'm, I'm deliberately doing this E Phrygian thing. I've created that tonality. That sort of harmony. And what I just did there was chords. So if you just, if you know the notes within the scale and what I was saying before, it works the same way as C major harmony. In fact, E Phrygian does come from C major. It's the third note, C, D, E. Really, a lot of this is just about know how to harmonize a C major scale, get a, get a triad, a mode, arpeggio, all that stuff from it. Yes, it will take you a bit of time if you've never done that before, but it, it, and it's quite mathematical as well. It's sort of like a law. Music doesn't always stick to that law, of course, if you listen to something like Giant Steps, crazy jazz tune. It's actually fairly simple. It, it uses like two five ones moving to different keys, but a lot of pop music might stay in one key, might do a key change at the end, but generally it'll stay in one key. But um, if you listen to progressive rock music, it, you know, bands like Dream Theater, they'll use modes, they'll use time signatures, they'll use all kinds of things. All of these elements of music are just there as, as, as tools and, and just almost like paints and you use them how you want to. I started off with a really rooty sort of soul feel. Um, what about sort of, um, what about like a, a blues thing? If I was to go like... Uh... <laughs> Just making it up there. There are loads of different types of blues. And I was going to do a really a standard one, then I went a bit jazzy. But we're using this, returning to that soul thing, using that mixolydian. I'm just going one, four, five chords using that same pattern. back to a really simple one, which I should have done in the first place. And that just comes from knowing a little bit about blues harmony, which is a little bit different. Now, I like to play lots of different styles, and I really recommend that you listen to different styles because you'll learn so many different things from those different styles. But generally speaking, you're going to find, you're going to encounter the same sorts of, of things. So. Um, you know, scales and modes. If you like funk music, that Dorian mode is going to turn up a lot. If you like blues music, this Mixolydian mode is going to turn up a lot. So you need to know your music theory. If you do, it will make your life much easier and you'll hear the same thing happen over and over and over again. If you like pop music, that major scale and natural minor scale will be used a lot. So I know that's talking about scales a lot, but um, in answer to Keith's question, you need to know that, that's your note selection. And then you need to work on your timing and your technique just to connect these up in musical ways. And really, and, and I'll, I'll finish here, this comes down to listening to the music you love, figuring out the bass lines, preferably by ear, and, and relating them to some of the concepts that I've spoken about. If you listen to your favorite bass players, your favorite bands, that will teach you everything you need to know about how to play the bass properly. And really, it comes down to, to working on your ear 
so that it's strong enough that you can do this yourself without having to go onto YouTube, without having to go onto tab sites. There are so many songs that I know that you'll want to be able to play that you can't find that um, someone hasn't tabbed out, someone hasn't transcribed. So you need to rely on yourself to do this. And I know I've talked about a lot of things here, but actually it's not that many things that you have to learn to be able to get your ear into a position where you can start to recognize, you know, like a major triad, a minor triad, really simple things. Take something simple, um, listen to it, try and work it out and try and relate it to some of these concepts that I've been talking about today. I think I'm going to leave it there. I hope, Keith, that I've, I've answered your question a bit. Um, I tried to keep these videos quite short, but really, I could go for hours and hours and hours talking about this subject and teaching you loads of things about it. So you, you may have questions that have sprung from this. And if you do, leave it in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And if there's anything else you want a lesson on, let me know. I'm doing at least two a week at the moment. So do subscribe so you know when they come, you don't miss anything. And yeah, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.